It's that time again, it's update time for the Quest platform. Version 30 just released, which is insane. We're already at version 30 for the Quest platform with some stuff for Quest 2 and something big for the Quest 1. Instead of doing a news video this weekend, I decided to do an update video because there's not a whole heck of a lot of news that I haven't already covered on the channel. So let's jump in and check out what's out for the Quest platform. All right, let us start right in. And first, we're going to talk about the microphone management options. Now, with version 30, this actually allows you to use your microphone in both party and game chat, switching between which one you want to use on the fly. It actually allows you to go into your party in the universal menu and manage your voice, swapping between the party chat and the game chat, which is actually pretty awesome because if you're in a party with some people and you want to be able to play a game together, you can jump into a game in party mode and switch to game chat so the entire game can hear you, whether it's an FPS game, an MMO once we get to that point, or whatever, and then you can switch back over to party chat, quickly allowing you to have a private conversation with someone in your party. Sounds like a pretty basic option, and it is. It's something that people have been asking for for a little while, but it'll make a big difference when you want to have that side conversation without having the whole world hear you, or your whole team. Or maybe you want to chat with someone about a strategy or something private and you just don't want the rest of the world to know about it. Well, this will give you the option to do that and it's a good option to have. Also, multitasking is getting a bump up in this new experimental setting. Multitasking is a big deal for a lot of people. And with an infinite office, the goal is to make working and doing productivity stuff in virtual reality as easy as possible. This new feature will allow you to actually have multiple different windows open in front of you using different applications. You actually drag and drop these different applications as you can see on this screen here. And you can have up to three different positions where you're using different things, whether it's a browser in one spot, watching something in another on Oculus TV, and then checking your stats for Oculus Move or on the Oculus Store or what have you browsing games. This allows for three different things to be going at the same time time and not just three browsers. Up until now, it was just browsers you could use and you could open new tabs. This allows you to use some of the 2D apps side by side right in the Oculus Home. And if Oculus actually adds in the option to install Android apps, as has been rumored in the past, this would be great for multitasking with Android apps as well. One of the big things about this update is actually the accessibility improvements. Oculus is taking steps forward to make the platform even more accessible to more people. And those options are going to be moving to a new tab called the accessibility tab right in the Oculus settings. There's going to be tools in there and features that allow you to actually customize your virtual reality experience. Some of the features that they have already had They've moved into this tab, including default text size, but they're also adding in what they call color correction. They say it's a system level display setting that increases the legibility of colors that are commonly difficult to differentiate. You're able to switch between three different options, green and red, red and green, and blue and yellow. Another request for accessibility is the option to be able to see from a standing vantage point even while physically seated. So they have a new option called raise view, which will raise your view height by 16 inches or 0.4 meters, allowing you to be seated and still have the same eye height approximately as a standing view, which will be great for accessibility and those that are unable to stand and still want to use virtual reality from the same height as is intended for some games. Oculus does say that they're still working to improve raise view, which is why it's actually in the experimental features as of right now, instead of in the accessibility tab, they're working on making it work on the supported games. It does work right in the Oculus home menu right now, which is good, but it sounds like the game has to implement the option to be able to actually make it work. Airlink came out for Quest 2 in April, but we hadn't really heard anything about Airlink for Quest 1. Well, Quest 1 users rejoice because Airlink is now out with version 30 for the Quest 1. Yes, that means the original Quest can now use the awesome power of Airlink and you won't have to use a cable to tether to a PC. I jumped back into the original Quest 1 to try to update to version 30, which I haven't gotten quite yet. And I tested it with a couple other things as I hadn't used it for several months. And I just have to say that there is a big difference between the two screens. The blacks are much better 
in the original Quest with the OLED display, but I love the resolution to the Quest 2. I wish they could match them together. Regardless, this is awesome for original Quest users and owners, so if you've been waiting for Air Link to come through, you can test it as soon as you get version 30 on your Quest. All right, we're back inside of the Quest. In the home menu, I just wanted to give you a quick run through of the new features, where they are, how they work, and all that stuff inside of version 30. So first of all, let's get to the settings menu. If, uh, if you don't remember how to get to settings, you just hit the quick menu button right there, and you hit settings, and that is the easiest place to go uh, to get to the settings. Otherwise, you gotta try to find them inside of the, uh, the app bar. Um, let's go find the accessibility tab first. So you got sec accessibility right here, but they've moved is they move the text size in here. You can change it from default to large, extra large, and largest. That's, I don't want to restart. I was gonna say I knew it was gonna make me restart. I would show that to you, but you gotta restart your your headset. Um, you can switch your Oculus and menu buttons from one side to the other. You can change your vo vibration controller intensity, but this is the big thing that was added: color correction. You can apply a display filter. Uh, to make colors easier to distinguish, you just turn that on, and you can choose the different, that's green, red, red, green, and that is blue, yellow. I'm, I'm assuming you probably can't see this because it's changing the display, not the actual output of the image. So those are the different options that you have, and those are the di that's like a color chart so you can see the difference between all of the different colors. But that is a great accessibility feature for those that have any kind of color uh, uh, sight issues, color blindness of any kind, uh, which is really awesome, and it's great that Oculus has added that in. And uh, it's a good step towards accessibility. The other accessibility thing that they've added in under experimental features is... I can find it... Raise view right here. So you can actually hit raise view, and it's going to pop up right here like this. And see, now it's about 16 inches higher. So it's too high for me right now because I'm not sitting down but I suppose if you wanted to be a giant, you could turn on raise view, but that allows you to raise the height of your actual view every time you're using it, so you can pop up and down. Uh, so that works good. Uh, I wanted to show you the mic settings, but those don't work right now because everyone has to be on version 30, apparently. According to Oculus, as soon as everybody has the version 30 update on all of the headsets, not just the rollout, they're gonna put that uh, feature in, implement the feature. So I can't show you that, but Let's see if I can get over to Explore. Can you move things up yet? I'm trying to see if I can get these tabs up yet. Um, can I drag these yet? That's not working. Let's go into Store here. Not that I want to do. Where am I trying to go here? Um, settings. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Let's go back to Settings. What's this thing here? Voice command. I always forget about the voice commands. Uh, reset view. You're supposed to be able to turn that on. I think it is a uh, ex experimental feature though that I don't have yet. If that's the case, that sucks because I really wanted to be able to try it. Move overlay, raise view, menu overlay. Uh, let me see. Notifications maybe. It's not notifications. I don't have any updates again. <laughs> I don't think I have any updates again. I, the goal was to actually show you the. Uh, the ability to be able to move stuff around, and I don't think I have that yet, which is stupid. It's version 30, and I don't even have the ability to be able to uh, add in different things, I don't think. Let me see. Let's go to a br the browser. Let's go browser. Okay, let's go to browser here. Where's this? This is the Pluto. Oh, this is Pluto. Okay. Can I drag stuff over yet? Okay, so apparently I can't do it yet. <laughs> I guess I won't be showing that to you, but essentially what it does is you got three different slots here and you can click on something like the store and you drag it to one spot and then you can click on something like the Explorer and drag it over and the browser and drag it over. Unfortunately, I can't show that to you right now because I don't have access to it. I apologize, but that's version 30. The only other thing that you've added in with the Quest 1 um, with this is the ability to use Airlink, which is right in these options, is under experimental features. You'll be able to turn it on and then hit this quick settings button and quick click the Oculus Airlink button. As soon as you hit that, it'll jump into Airlink super fast, super easy. It's a matter of just hitting launch, launches you into Airlink within a matter of a few seconds, and then you're in the Rift platform right there, and then you're right in the Rift platform. So that is, uh, that is as easy as it is. And now Quest 1 users can do it just like Quest 2 users.
There you go, there is the version 30 updates for Quest 1 and Quest 2. Honestly, I'm very happy they're still supporting the original Quest platform and bringing Airlink so that you who own the Quest 1 can still enjoy that awesome feature that they recently released. It's also great to see some accessibility options and some additional microphone options, which is great as well. What do you think of these updates? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are, if there's anything that sticks out to you that makes you excited. Maybe you're a Quest 1 user and you're going to use Airlink. Let me know that down in the comments as well. If you want to get the most out of your quest and your quest too, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. Plus, you can check out even more of my videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing.